Broly the boy. Hey, Fred, I'm going to the Springfield Cosmic Con this weekend, said my bossy older sister, Emma. Want to come? Tickets started at $30. I shrugged. Can't afford it. I'll put it on the debit card, she said. Why was she being nice to me? Didn't matter, I'd take it. Really, awesome. Emma was 14, a year older than me. Mom and Dad had put her in charge while they were away on another of their import-export business trips to Asia. They'd be gone for the rest of our summer vacation, so they gave Emma a debit card to pay for food and other expenses that weren't on autopay, and checked in on us regularly on ZM. We went on Sunday, the last and cheapest day of the con. Emma dragged me out of bed and onto the bus in time to get there early. She wanted to see the cosplayers as they arrived. I didn't much care about the cosplayers, I wanted to see the game booths, but as usual, we ended up doing what she wanted. Which turned out to be a pleasant surprise. The cosplayers were amazing. Lots of characters from anime and superhero movies. Sprinkled among them were girls our age wearing what looked like little girls' party dresses. Frilly, lace-trimmed frocks with full skirts and colored wigs trimmed with bows, clips, flowers and other decorations. They clustered mostly in twos and threes, rarely alone. Emma loved what they were wearing. Lolita fashions. From Japan, based on the dresses Victorian girls wore long ago, all lace and ribbons and petticoats. Aren't they just so sweet? They were, but I wasn't about to admit that to my sister. Too sweet for my taste. Those wigs are ridiculous. They are not. They're cute. It was odd to hear her drool over the goopy dresses and hairstyles. She usually dressed like most girls, in pants or leggings instead of skirts, but something about the Lolita style seemed to excite her. Something about it excited me, too. I found myself stiffening, as I did all too easily these days, at the sight of the girls decked out in frills and flounces. I wasn't sure if it was the girls or the frills and flounces. Maybe both. The costumed girls were behaving coquettishly, mincing and curtsying and trading air kisses, and the sight of them was intoxicating. I love your dress, Emma told one of the most elaborately dressed of the Lolitas, a girl who introduced herself as Sarah. She complimented Emma on her hair, and they got into a long conversation joined by Sarah's friends, who were also in costume. It sounded as though they were involved in a local group of girls who liked to get together to dress up as lolitas and were telling my sister all about it. For the rest of the day, I found my eyes drawn to the lolitas as they strolled about, carrying cute little purses and swishing their skirts back and forth and drawing attention. They were like little living dolls, and I wanted to hold them, play with them, slowly undress them. Of course I would never dare do anything of the kind. Tilda 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 a couple of Sundays later, Emma told me she would be going out for the afternoon, leaving me alone for a few hours. I'll try not to burn down the house, I said. Where are you going? She was reluctant to say, but when I asked again, she said she was going to a meeting of the Springfield Lolita Club. The what? She explained that there were a couple of dozen girls in the area who dressed in Lolita finery every other Sunday afternoon and had tea at the house of the group's leader, Sarah, the girl Emma met at Cosmic Con. Sarah invited her to attend their next meeting. Do you have one of those outfits? I smiled to think of my sister in the fussy, ultra-feminine clothes the Lolita girls wore. She blushed. Sarah said that for my first visit I could just wear my prettiest dress, with a slipper petticoat under it. I thought I'd wear my junior bridesmaid's dress from my cousin's wedding. I still have the slip, and the dress has a built-in petticoat. I knew the one she meant. A calf-length sleeveless white satin dress with white fluff peeking out below the hem. It looked good on her. It was less than a year old and would probably still fit her, though her chest wasn't as flat as it was then. Well, have fun, I said. I kind of wished I could see the Lolita girls all dressed up, but it definitely sounded like a girls-only affair. She disappeared upstairs after lunch and emerged two hours later, wearing her junior bridesmaid's dress and more makeup than usual, with a big pink bow and some sparkly clips in her hair. She was catching a ride with one of the other Lolita girls, Mia, whose mom was driving. When their car pulled into our driveway, she told me to be good and darted out the door. 
She returned three hours later in a high state of excitement, still wearing her junior bridesmaid dress, but carrying in four shopping bags full of colorful girls' clothes. They were so pretty, she said, all the lawless in their nicest dresses and hair and makeup. Everyone so polite, so refined. They all called each other Miss, Miss Mia, Miss Karen, and I was Miss Emma. They served tea with delicate little pastries and sandwiches. It sounds very girly, I said. Did anything happen? Miss Sarah introduced me and asked me to stand. I gave them a clumsy curtsy, but no one made fun of me. She explained the club rules. The main thing was that I needed to get a Lolita outfit. I could order one online using the debit card, but they're expensive, and mom would see it on our statement and ask questions. So what are you going to do? I explained my situation to Miss Sarah. She's my height and five pounds heavier, so all of her things fit me, and she gave me a couple of her older Lolita outfits to get started. I'll have to see if mom will let me buy some of my own. So you're one of those Lolita girls now? Well, yes, she said defiantly. Or at least I'll go a few times and see how I like it. Will I get to see you in your outfits, or will you change somewhere else? I'll change here, and I better not hear any snark about what I wear. I'm sure you'll look very cute, I said, managing to keep a straight face. She said I would join her dressed as a brolita. As the day of the next Lolita Club meeting approached, I found myself becoming strangely excited. The prospect of dressing up as a girl and being accepted into this world of elegance and femininity was both exhilarating and nerve-wracking. Natalie was relentless in her preparations, styling my wig with delicate ribbons and flowers, teaching me to apply makeup, and even guiding me on how to adjust my voice to sound more feminine. Finally, the day arrived. I donned the Lolita dress that Natalie had chosen for me, a pastel ensemble with a high-waisted skirt adorned with lace and bows. The bodice was fitted and detailed with embroidered roses, and a matching lace choker adorned my neck. I couldn't deny that the dress was beautiful, but wearing it made me feel like I was stepping into unfamiliar territory. As we arrived at the club meeting location, my heart raced with anxiety. Natalie held my hand reassuringly as we walked inside, where a room full of elegantly dressed Lolita girls welcomed us. I noticed a mix of awe and curiosity in their eyes as they looked at me, the newest addition to their gathering. Hannah, the club leader, approached us with a warm smile. Ah, Natalie, you made it, and you brought Riza with you. How wonderful. Her voice was sweet and inviting, putting me somewhat at ease. Thank you for inviting me, I replied nervously, trying to adopt the soft and gentle tone that Natalie had coached me on. Hannah gestured to the other girls. Everyone, this is Riza, Natalie's little sister. She's exploring the world of Brolita fashion with us today. The girls around us chimed with friendly greetings, and I smiled back, feeling slightly more at ease. Natalie introduced me to some of the girls she had met previously, and they were all surprisingly accepting of my presence. Throughout the meeting, I learned more about the intricate world of Lolita fashion and the various styles that the girls favored. They shared their tips on hairstyling, makeup techniques, and how to accessorize with ribbons and bows. I found myself genuinely enjoying the experience, and the nerves I felt earlier began to fade away. As the meeting continued, we engaged in various activities, including tea and snacks just like Natalie had described from her previous visits. The girls were kind and welcoming, treating me as one of their own. I felt a sense of belonging that I had never experienced before. As the day went on, I grew more comfortable and confident in my Brolita attire. I embraced the swishing of my skirt as I walked and reveled in the delicate feel of lace and ribbons against my skin. I found myself laughing and conversing with the other girls, feeling like I had finally found a place where I could be myself. At the end of the meeting, Hannah approached me once more. Riza, we would be delighted to have you join our club as a Brolita member if you're interested. I hesitated for a moment, contemplating the unexpected joy I had found in this new world. I, I would love to join, I replied with a shy smile. Hannah's eyes sparkled with excitement. Wonderful. We'll help you find the perfect Brolita outfits, and you'll have a supportive group of friends here. And so, I officially became a member of the Lolita Club, embracing my newfound identity as Riza, the Brolita.
Over time, I grew more confident in my femininity, thanks to the encouragement and camaraderie of the other girls. They helped me learn the intricate art of dressing like a girl and shared valuable life lessons about self-expression and acceptance. As I continued my journey as a brolita, I discovered that this fashion subculture was not just about clothes and appearance, it was about embracing one's identity and expressing it freely, without fear of judgment. My experiences with the Lolita Club allowed me to break free from society's expectations and explore different facets of myself. In time, my parents returned from their business trips and learned of my involvement in the Lolita Club. To my surprise, they were remarkably supportive, appreciating the positive impact it had on my self-confidence and happiness. As I look back on that fateful day when Natalie introduced me to the world of Brolita fashion, I can't help but feel grateful. It was through her persistence and love that I found a place where I truly belonged, a place where I could embrace my femininity and be accepted for who I was. And so, the tale of Riza, the Brolita, and her journey of self-discovery and acceptance continued, surrounded by a circle of friends who loved and accepted her for who she was, regardless of societal norms and expectations. The End